Has your doctor told you that you had uterine fibroids and maybe gave you some treatment options? Maybe it was too many options and you're confused about what is right for you. Well, today I'm going to talk about uterine fibroids and some of the surgical treatments for fibroids. That sounds good to you? Continue watching. Well, welcome back to my channel. I'm Dr. Dupon. I'm a board certified gynecologic oncologist. I'm passionate about educating women to live longer and healthier lives, and I believe that begins with great health. Today we're going to talk about uterine fibroids. Fibroids are very common. About 70% of all women will have fibroids at some point in their life. Now, African-American women usually will have fibroids about 10 years earlier than Caucasian women, so a lot of times the fibroids will affect their fertility. And so today we're gonna to talk about what are some of the ways we use to treat fibroids. Well, fibroids are benign tumors of the uterus, and usually when we look at a uterus, so this would be a fibroid here. You can have them in the muscle, you can have them on top of the uterus, you can have them in the cavity. They can be in any location. You can have one, you can have numerous fibroids. But we do know that they're typically benign. They they do have estrogen and, and progesterone receptors, so they are responsive to hormones, which means that while you're having menstrual cycles, they can grow. A lot of times, if you have them removed, they will grow back, and so I do tell patients to keep in mind if they have what's called a myomectomy, and all the fibroids removed, those fibroids can definitely come back. Now, I have had fibroids myself. Many women in my family have had fibroids. My mom has had fibroids, and so I'm very knowledgeable in fibroids because I've been the patient and I've been the doctor treating them, so I definitely understand what a distressing symptom this can be or issue that this can be for many women. Well, while some women have symptoms, most women don't have any symptoms. A lot of times we'll pick up fibroids on, you know, a CAT scan or ultrasound. I've seen women that had a CAT scan, let's say for back pain, and oh, by the way, they were told they had fibroids and they were sent to their GYN doctor. Well, not everyone is symptomatic. I've also had patients that maybe when they were pregnant and they were getting their OB ultrasound, they were found to have fibroids. And so what do you do in that situation? Well, in terms of fibroids, if you're not symptomatic, they really can just be monitored. Now that does, you know, depend on your age. Certainly if you are, you know, in your early 20s, you want to have your babies. I do have patients to make sure they see their GYN doctor on a regular basis and to make sure they get their ultrasounds because they can grow and the fibroids can cause issues with future pregnancy. So it doesn't mean that you can't get pregnant. It just means that, you know, if it's too large, it may need to be removed because a lot of times these really big fibroids, they take up space in the uterus and sometimes the baby doesn't have space to grow. So a lot of times that's why we'll remove them in someone who maybe is thinking about having more children. Now if you're someone, you know, this later in life, you've done having all your children or you don't want children and the fibroids aren't causing symptoms, then you don't necessarily have to have them removed. Now a lot of times what I'm looking for is something called a leiomyosarcoma because I do know that women in their 50s and up are at more at risk for uterine cancers, especially uterine sarcomas. And a lot of times they may mimic a fibroid. So it's not that they are a fibroid, but sometimes Sometimes their characteristics and some of their symptoms, such as bleeding, may look like a fibroid. So if I'm concerned about a uterine sarcoma or a leiomyosarcoma, which is one type of uterine sarcoma, a lot of times I'll get a pelvic MRI because that's one of the best imaging tests that we have to determine, you know, is this suspicious for a cancer or is it just a benign fibroid? So when your doctor talks to you about treatment options, we're going to talk today about some of the surgery options. Now, remember there's hormonal therapy, such as birth control pills the IUD, there's treatments such as uterine artery embolization or uterine fibroid embolization. I'm not going to talk about those today, but I did write a great ebook if you're interested. You can check the link below and get my ebook and it talks about all the different ways we treat fibroids. And I'm also going to have a workshop coming up about fibroids. So if you're interested, please check the link below. Well, in terms of surgery, probably five really established surgeries that we do for fibroids. And so we're going to talk about that today. The one is MR guided focus ultrasound surgery and so that's where we use the MRI machine to give ultrasonic ablation to fibroids and so it's done in only specialized academic centers it's not really well it's not commonly done but it's one of the newer techniques that's available for fibroids especially if you have small fibroids or not very many fibroids and one of the things because it's a newer technique is that we don't have a lot of long-term pregnancy data so we don't know if you have this procedure you know what are the pregnancy outcomes later but it's a very promising procedure that uses the MRI machine to kind of focus treatment to the fibroids another newer technique that is FDA approved is the radio frequency ablation and so that's done with the laparoscopic surgery, we'll use radiofrequency ablation during the time of a laparoscopic surgery to treat the fibroids. Now this is better done for smaller fibroids and it's, again, it's a newer technique so we don't have a lot of long-term data in terms of pregnancy outcomes with this and about 
30% of both of the techniques, the MRI focused ultrasound treatment and also the radio frequency ablation treatment, about 30% of those patients will need another treatment because their fibroids came back or they started having symptoms again. So just so you know, these are newer techniques. They're very promising, but we don't have long-term pregnancy outcome data. So more, we, there's more we have to learn about these new techniques. Now, a very common technique that's been tried and true and that, you know, that I've had myself twice is a myomectomy. And so what a myomectomy is actually removing the fibroid. And we can remove the fibroids many different ways. Now, it'll depend on the location. So if you have a type zero or type one fibroid, those are usually fibroids that are in the cavity of the uterus. And so those can be removed with just hysteroscopy. So if you have like a fibroid here that's in the cavity, like this one here, that can be removed through a hysteroscope or outpatient procedure where that fibroid is removed and though and that's a very common procedure. Now, a lot of times we'll combine the hysteroscopic myomectomy with the laparoscopic myomectomy because some people or most people will have fibroids in many locations. So if you've had small fibroids, in the muscle or on top of the uterus and also some in the cavity, you can have a laparoscopic and hysteroscopic myomectomy. And so that'll depend on just the location and the size of the fibroids and your doctor will talk to you about different options. Now, when we do a laparoscopic myomectomy, that can be done through, you know, straight sticks, laparoscopy, it can be done through a single site laparoscopic surgery, or even using a robot assisted laparoscopic surgery. So there's many different tools we use to remove the fibroids. And so another way where we can remove fibroids is through an open incision or an abdominal myomectomy. Now I will usually do those for people that have very large fibroids, like grapefruit size fibroids, or who have numerous fibroids that I can't do laparoscopically. So for those who have what's called an abdominal myomectomy, that's usually incision usually we'll do a c-section incision which is a transverse incision kind of in the bikini line to remove the fibroids now that surgery will require a one to two night hospital stay and typically the recovery is a little bit longer because the incision is larger than doing it you know through a laparoscopic or robotic approach but it's a very common surgery and it is well established and this and has been done for many many years now the most common treatment for uterine fibroids is the hysterectomy and that's probably what you'll be told first. Now, the hysterectomy is not for everyone. So let's say you want to have children. Now, you may not want your uterus removed, and that's okay. You may have to have different treatment options. Now, I do know some patients that have numerous fibroids that maybe haven't had children. A lot of times we may do surgery in several phases. We may try to shrink your fibroids and remove some of them, and then come back and do another surgery to remove the rest of them. That will depend on just how many you have. But ideally, hysterectomy is the most common treatment treatment, but it's not the only treatment. So when we're doing a hysterectomy, we're removing the uterus. And so that's for somebody that doesn't want any more children or maybe who has cancer. Because if we have cancer, we don't want to do a myomectomy or someone that we're concerned has a uterine sarcoma. Those patients will need a hysterectomy and not a myomectomy. So with the hysterectomy, usually we'll remove the uterine fundus and the cervix, the tubes and ovaries. Well, usually the ovaries will depend upon your age. We usually nowadays will take the fallopian tubes because we think that's where ovarian cancer starts and so we'll usually remove the uterus cervix and fallopian tubes and leave the ovaries if you're young we're still pre-menopausal but again if you have a cancer then the, the surgery discussion changes where you may have to have everything removed but just keep in mind that most women will have a hysterectomy especially women who have completed their childbearing now some of the things that we think about in terms of patients with large fibroids is heavy bleeding a lot of times these women are anemic and so oftentimes We'll try to correct the anemia before surgery. I know when I've done myomectomies, you know, a lot of patients lose blood. And so I do try to correct the anemia before surgery because I do know they will lose blood during surgery. And so we try not to transfuse patients if we can avoid it, but sometimes people do have to have blood transfusions, especially women with very severe anemia. Well, today we talked about some of the treatment options for uterine fibroids, mainly the surgical treatments. Again, there's many different types of treatments, so definitely get my ebook and I'll talk about all the different types of treatments and if you're interested in my course that I'm having next month please check the link below. Now there is a research study called the FRIEND study that's available
available for women who have fibroids and want to preserve fertility. It's looking at green tea extract, giving 800 milligrams of green tea extract to see if that affects fibroid growth. And so the study is open in three sites in the U.S., University of Chicago, Yale, and Johns Hopkins. I'll put the link to the research study below if you're interested. Please check it out. They're still enrolling patients. And so I hope that that information is helpful for you. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please share this video with a friend, neighbor, sister, coworker, and watch this video next. Thank you for watching to the very end, and I'll see you next time.